Welcome to another Fold It Lab report. I'm BCAP, here with my colleague Ian H. We are here at the Institute for Protein Design at the University of Washington. If this is your first time watching a Fold It Lab report, we release these videos on the first of every month to update you about the science behind Fold It. This month, I want to talk about a new protein design challenge we're launching in Fold It. We are challenging you to create ligand binding proteins. In biochemistry, a ligand is a chemical that can interact with a specific protein. We sometimes also call these small molecules. A ligand can be a drug, like caffeine or ibuprofen. A ligand can also be a molecule that the body makes naturally, like the hormone estrogen or the neurotransmitter dopamine. Unlike a protein, which is a huge molecule with thousands and thousands of atoms, ligands are small, maybe a few dozen atoms. But ligands sometimes contain atom types that we don't normally see in proteins, like phosphorus or fluorine. When we think about new ways to engineer how proteins and ligands can pair up, there are two ways to think about it. The first is to craft a new ligand by adding and subtracting atoms so that the ligand binds a target protein. This is the traditional approach to drug development. It's what most pharmaceutical companies specialize in. Most of the prescription drugs that you might get at the pharmacy are this kind of designed ligand that interacts with a protein in your body. Last year in Foldit, we had some ligand design puzzles where you could add and subtract atoms to a ligand so that it bound to a target protein. We'll definitely see more problems like that in the future, but today I want to introduce a harder problem. The other way to create a ligand protein pair is to design a new protein that could bind to a target ligand. There are lots of reasons you might want to design a protein that could bind a specific ligand. For example, if someone is exposed to a toxic chemical, you could use a protein to soak up that ligand from the bloodstream. Some ligands have special properties and can work together with proteins. The ligand chlorophyll absorbs sunlight, and when it's bound by the photosystem II proteins, together they catalyze a reaction that produces oxygen. Creating a new ligand binder poses some unique challenges, but many of the principles are the same as in other protein design problems. A good ligand binder usually has a recessed binding pocket where the target ligand can fit in tightly like a glove. Just like proteins, ligands have nonpolar hydrophobic atoms, which like to be buried away from water, but they also have polar hydrophilic atoms that need to make hydrogen bonds with other polar atoms. In fact, buns are one of the biggest problems we face in ligand binder design. If you recall, buns are buried unsatisfied atoms. They're what you get when a polar atom cannot make hydrogen bonds with another polar atom, and buns are bad. Your designed ligand binding proteins need to have polar side chains that can make hydrogen bonds to all of the polar atoms on the target. But because the binding pocket is usually recessed in the protein, it's difficult to add polar side chains without creating buns. It's very tricky to create a binding pocket that has polar side chains that can satisfy the ligand, but no buns. We think this is a problem Folded players can solve. At the end of April, we launched our first ligand binder design puzzle. In this puzzle, the protein backbone is pre-folded. The challenge is to redesign the binding pocket so that it binds the ligand. In our other puzzle updates this month, we had lots of protein binder puzzles where we're trying to design a binder for protein targets. In April alone, we had puzzles that target the influenza hemagglutinin protein, the TGF receptor, and the TI2 protein. We also had some more symmetric protein design puzzles where you're designing a protein that can assemble with identical copies of itself. And finally, we had more electron density puzzles, where the challenge is to fold up a protein into a cloud of electron density and arrive at the correct shape of the protein. And that brings us to this month's design of the month. This month, we have a design from Ickfield Dizanamen from puzzle 1977, Symmetric Tetramer Design. This is a symmetric tetramer with C4 symmetry from Ickfield Dizanamen. Um, it looks like a uh, ferredoxin-like fold with two helices packed on top of four beta strands. Um, we see that the 
monomer unit has a strong hydrophobic core, so lots of orange hydrophobics that like to be buried from water. And the surface of the protein, if we hide symmetric chains, we see that the surface of this protein is mostly blue polar residues, which is good. There are still quite a few exposed hydrophobic residues on the surface. Um, those should make tight binding if this protein encounters other copies of itself. And we hope that all of those hydrophobics are well behaved otherwise and don't cause this protein to aggregate. Um, but this protein looks like it has a good chance of folding up. And I want to zoom in a little bit and look at the hydrogen bonding. Um, so this is very nice. It looks like we have a pretty extensive network here that involves several residues at the interface. So these are buried from solvent. And these hydrogen bonds, therefore, will be very selective. Um, so so these, if these hydrogen bonds these hydrogen bonds are buried from the surface of the protein, uh, which is what we like to see in hydrogen bond networks. It should ensure that this network forms as designed and not uh, in some off-target pattern. Furthermore, we see that all of these polar atoms seem to be 100% satisfied. I think if we look at the Bunds objective, yes, um, this is very... Very strong work from Ickfil Dizanaman. Zero buns in the solution. That's what we like to see. The one thing that I do notice here is that we have a edge strand at the interface packing against an alpha helix. And I just like to look closely at these because we have to remember that the edge strand of a beta sheet has some polar atoms that need to make hydrogen bonds, either with water or with other polar side chains. Um, and so we see that these polar atoms on the edge of the sheet are packed kind of closely against this helix, but it looks like they may have just enough space to make hydrogen bonds with water surrounding the protein, and they can avoid being buns. In other cases, if if the edge strand of a beta sheet packs too closely and is buried at the interface, uh, that will make buns, right? Buried, unsatisfied atoms on this edge strand, and that would be no good. But all in all, this looks like a very, very nice symmetric tetramer from Ickville Dizanaman. Please, please share your favorite solutions with us in a puzzle. We love to see what you like most in your protein designs. That's all we have this month. You can look forward to office hours from Milkshake and Beta Helix. Thanks for watching. Thanks for playing. We'll see you next time.